Welcome to this Excel video. This is another video that will be done using Excel on a Mac version 2011. Today what we're going to look at is some more data validation. You might say some of these things are advanced data validation tricks, um, but I'm sure um, there are some even more advanced stuff out there. So uh, let's just get into it. Firstly, um, I'm just going to recap basic data validation. Before I do that, I'm going to refer you to a second page where we've got a few tables. So I'm going to create some named ranges so that we can do some of these data validation tricks. So the first named range I'm going to do is just a list of countries. And there's two ways that I can create a named range. I'm going to do it the easy way first, and that is by clicking in the name box and typing the name that I want to use, which in this case is country list. So that's the easy way. Um, another way to do it, I'll use for my second table, and that's using the name manager. So I'm going to select the table that I want, click on insert, name, and then define. And it brings up a little box here that gives us uh, some tools that we can use. So I'm going to call this rank table and click OK. So now we've got two custom lists that we can use for the first part of our data validation. I'm just going to select down to row 20. I'm going to click on data, validation, select lists from the allow box and I want to type country list. That is what we had created as the first named range. So this is great. Piece of cake. I can just uh, pick the, the countries that I had played against and put in a score and it provides me with a little bit of a I'll just fix that provides me with a little bit of an opportunity to create a little bit of a um, a list of my matches and so on but what occasionally happens is that um, there may be a reason that you want to enter a country that's not on the list for example you went to a tournament and a developing nation was there and what happens is you get an error message come up and so you legitimately played this country and you want to be able to record it but your data validation is tripping you up so there is a way around this what uh, why this is popping up is that Samoa is not in my top 50 list that I had created a second ago so I am going to cancel that and what I can do is just alter my data validation and so the data validation window has three different tabs the first tab is a uh, the one that we've seen already which is where you put the settings in the next one allows you to put an input message in like so and the third tab is what I want to direct your attention to the style of data validation defaults to the most rigorous validation which is stop but there are two other options and I'm just going to choose one of them which is warning and I'm going to put a little message in here and what we'll find now is that firstly we see the little pop-up message which appears anytime you click on a cell with the data validation that we have just created the second thing you'll notice is if I type Samoa again, I get a different error message. It tells me your selection does not appear in the list. Do you want to continue? I can say yes, and it allows that. So 
having stop um, data validation prevents users from selecting anything that's not on your list, but warning or information data validation allows them to enter something from the list if they choose to. Um, and we chose warning, so it gives you a pop-up. If we, we had chosen data validation with an information style, let's see what it tells us. Rather than asking us to continue, it just asks for an OK. So very subtle difference there, not really much difference at all. What we'll move on to in the next data validation advanced trick is to prevent duplicates. Now, the thing that I am probably best at in Excel is writing formulas. So I like putting data validation and conditional formatting and so on using formulas because I feel like I'm in control. So um, what the uh, the use of, of this particular advanced data validation trick is, is to prevent duplicates. So um, let's say you are um, the USA and you are trying to organize a tournament and you want to invite five countries to play against that will help you prepare for something like the World Cup. So you've got your top five preferences for teams and you can give that list to your uh, director and they can go and chase up these countries and see how many of them they can get to invite. So I want to be able to have it so that I can just type countries in and I know that I won't be entering anything in twice. Obviously in this circumstance with only five selections it's not likely to happen but uh, if you've got a list of a hundred it, it may easily happen that you select something twice. So uh, I need to put in some data validation that's going to prevent that from happening. So just up here I've written the formulas that I'm going to use. This formula, this first one here, is going to find out is the country on the list? Have I entered a country in the top 50? And the second one is going to say, have I already picked this country or not? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do it one at a time. Select the cells, click data validation, and I want to choose custom. Custom then allows me to enter a formula. I'll just drag that down so I can uh, just copy the formula without having to think about it. So the first one I want to look at is I want to find out if the country that I have typed in is in the formula, is in the top 50, sorry. So now, if I just go and pick some countries, they're all okay. Click on my Samoa friend again, and there we go. I'm not able to do it. So that formula is preventing me from picking someone outside of the list. So I'm just going to start that again. And I'm going to put the second part of our formula in there. So an AND formula means that both the criteria have to be satisfied for it to be accepted into the cell. So AND, it has to be in the list. And also, it can only appear once in our list. So count if is a great formula to use in spreadsheets but it's also very valuable in things like conditional formatting and data validation. So what that formula says 
is that what we've just entered into cell F6 can only appear once in the range between F6 and F10. So now that's okay. That's okay. But that's not. So it's asking me to re enter. And that's still not okay. So what we've created is uh, a list where you can only select the country once, and it also has to be in the list that you've just developed. The last uh, advanced data validation that I want to look at is um, using one drop-down box to select what's in a second drop-down box. So I'm going to go back to our tables page first, and I'm going to set up our drop-down boxes. So um, there are a few different confederations in world football. Um, there is more than this, but uh, I'm just going to select these four as an example. Here are four confederations, so I'm just going to use the quick way to do data validation names. Uh, I'm just going to call that confed. And now I'm just going to select each of the groups and give them very importantly, the name that is in their title. So how data, advanced data validation works where you select one drop down box with another is it looks across this group based upon your selection and then uses that to select the next list. So let's go and have a look at this. What I want to do, I'll do it in these two cells here. So this is the easy bit. I can choose Oceania or Asia, Europe, Americas, etc. It's these cells. Why don't I select these four? We'll do just uh, one column at a time to keep it simple. So this time in data validation, I have to use another formula. So what that indirect function does is it converts the word that it sees in cell F17 into a named range. If there is a named range that has the same name as the value that's entered in that cell, then that will now appear as a drop down list. So if I copy that across, or these two across, I'll probably have to edit them. Just slightly alter that cell reference. There we go. So, based upon my selection up here, it allows me to control the next drop down box below it. So, the indirect function. It's a little bit of a, a challenging one to understand and learn, but very, very worthwhile if you're trying to have drop-down box, boxes linked to each other. Hope you enjoyed that data validation lesson. Um, hope you enjoyed the fact that it was done on a Mac. If you have any questions, interested in the spreadsheet, or want me to do a video on a particular topic, then please drop me a line. Thanks for coming past. See you next time.